The, um, the Silkworm project uh, is something I started uh, thinking about six years ago. Um, I was very interested in this idea of creating these uh, bio-machine ecosystems where um, the machine uh, provides this um, environment, uh, artificial environment for certain organisms. Uh, specifically, I was interested in insects. And uh, the, the functionality or the purpose of the machine was um, sort of um, unfolded through both the uh, biological and also the technical aspect of the system, um, these sort of hybrid cybernetic systems. This, the Silkworm project is the first of a, a series of other works that I would like to uh, continue working on with insects. Um, uh, I'm really interested in the aspect of insect architecture um, and also a certain sort of swarming behaviors, etc., and how that affects the design of technology. Um, behavioral scientists, when they're researching insect building or animal building in general, um, uh, one aspect of it that's very interesting to me is that it, it, it's sort of these models of uh, intelligence uh, through the study of their building behavior and how they perceive space and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and so that's where this whole uh, idea of, of doing these insect machines started. The Silkworm project itself specifically looks at the 3D printer. Um, in my case, um, when I was going to school uh, seven, eight years ago, I was first introduced to the uh, additive DIY 3D printer and um, I thought maybe I could create a sort of biological version of that um, that uh, would, would sort of print silk straight from the organism's mouth and sort of cut out the entire uh, sericulture industry um, and processes. Not that this is, a, this is for the purpose of, of uh, like functional, it's more exploratory um, and how to create that kind of a system where the silkworm acts as both a, um, an input and, a, an, and an output, or the silk acts as an output. The, the series that you see here uh, has mainly three chapters. I started with the first chapter, which is Machine One. Um, and uh, when I was first starting to research the organism, uh, I was designing the machine system from a very um, anthropocentric point of view. Um, I referenced a lot of uh, technical history, the sort of complicated entanglement of um, how computer logic uh, evolved based on uh, the logic of the Jacquard loom. Um, and, um, and so in that case, uh, the organization of textiles and, and fibers uh, informed how later data was organized. And, and in my first uh, explorations, I wanted to kind of reverse that process um, and use the, the logic of technology to influence um, the silkworm, which is the producer of silk fibers. Um, that experiment itself had a lot of issues um, because I think I failed to address uh, the silkworm's behavior and, and sort of um, desirable environment for them to, to, to inhabit healthily while they're spinning, etc. And so um, the experiments themselves were unsuccessful. Um, around this time, uh, Neri Oxman from the MIT Media Lab, Media Matters, she, she published her, her work with the Silkworm Pavilion, where they, uh, from, as an engineer and architect, she was researching um, uh, how the, the way the silkworms spatially spin um, in, in, or spin their silk can inform how we can build and fabricate uh, large structures, um, because it's, in, in essence, um, in essence, the silkworm is spinning is is sort of spinning silk around itself to wrap itself uh, wrap around itself, and so um, Neri Oxman in the in 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 thinking about how to use digital fabrication to to build architecture, um, that process I think is very different. Our perspective is very different than uh, 3D printing something very small, and so that really inspired me to start researching. 
um, the spinning behavior itself of silkworms and how that reflects uh, how they perceive space. It's both a behavioral uh, phenomenon and also it's based on their own morphology because as insects, um, as I've read, uh, certain re uh, animal behavior researchers talk about they, they don't have a very complicated brain and so a lot of the times they use their bodies to measure as they're building um, as, a, as, a, as almost like a ruler or a tool and so, so from that kind of a research um, sprung out the, the second and third iterations of the ser series um, of machines, and I think the third, uh, the third machine itself. Um, so, so where I think where the um, I think starting from from the second iteration of the machine, I was trying to really build uh, a machine around the silkworm um, behavior itself, and uh, where the where the machine would almost reflect this sort of perceptual blind spot. Um, of the silkworm's uh, spatial perception. And so with the final machine, it's an early prototype. It's not ultimately at the point where I want it to be. Um, I would like to create this sort of suspended um, chamber for spinning where the, the silkworm would be in that chamber and it could rotate around. And so it, it's a right now it's an early step towards that direction. But I would like to try to combine my, my previous research of both uh, the sort of machine aspect and, and computational aspect of, of system technology with uh, research on the perception and, and worldview the, uh, of the silkworm and combine that into a more equally, equally hybrid system logic.